Man, one of the nice things about titanium is you can have a big old chunky watch like this without all the heft. So how thick is this and how much does it weigh? We'll go over that. All part of the full review of the core timepieces Fury GMT. Next on WatchWit. <laughs> So I'll give you the specs and measurements of the Fury GMT, and then we'll get into my likes and dislikes. This cushion case is brushed grade five titanium, and you've got a titanium bracelet as well with a stainless steel clasp. There's a slightly domed sapphire crystal. There's a sterile seven millimeter screw in crown with guards, and you've got a screw down case back as well, 300 meters of water resistance. There's a textured flame dial with applied indices and the applied logo at the nine o'clock spot. Uh, the uh, print is limited to just the uh, below the pinion above the six, Fury GMT and 30 ATM. The chapter ring features 24 hour markings on the Riot and you've got a secondary 24 hour scale on the 90 click bi-directional rotating bezel. So you can track three time zones with this watch. You use the uh, handset for your local time, uh, the GMT hand with the uh, Riot for the second time zone, and the GMT hand with the bezel for the third time zone. The luminescence is listed as Lumibrite, and you've got a nice clean application across the indices, the handset, and the bezel as well. So this cushion case is 42 millimeters in diameter. You've got a lug to lug length of 50.9 millimeters, 22 millimeter lug width, and 15.5 millimeters thick. It weighs 173 grams with all links on the supplied titanium bracelet. The Fury is powered by the new Seiko NH34A automatic GMT movement, uh, beats at 21,600 vibrations per hour, 24 joules, 41 hour power reserve. You've got hand winding and hacking, and it has an accuracy rating of minus 20 to plus 40 seconds per day. This of course is similar to the NH35. Uh, which is the platform that the NH34 was built upon. Now I hand timed this one over 16 days and it came in at plus 35.6 seconds per day. So a little fast on this one, uh, but you know, it's within tolerance. So this is an office or caller's GMT, which uh, basically means that uh, it's best if you're one that doesn't travel much, but you wanna track other time zones. So you can use that GMT hand to do that, uh, say to track a colleague in another city or a family member, et cetera. It's where you're staying put, but you want to see the time in other time zones. Of course, you can travel with it as well, but it's not as convenient as a traveler's GMT. Now we'll get into my likes and dislikes. And of course, if you want to explore more with this watch, check out the full in-depth unboxing video there. Man, I love this bold cushion case look. Uh, and look how thick it is too. If you're somebody that's not into thick watches, this might not be for you. But if you're on the edge, this is probably the one to uh, win you over. Because remember, this is grade five titanium. So the you get all this nice bold look without it weighing a ton. You know, it's nice and light. Uh, it's still relatively um, hefty for titanium because the case is so uh, so big. But man, just the, uh, the discount you get in the uh, weight uh, from using that titanium really uh, sets it apart. And on top of the great looks of this case, uh, well actually, literally on top, the bezel. Love that gunmetal gray contrast against the, uh, the titanium uh, case. And uh, you know, you'd really get that sense of, uh, it, it looks like it's stainless steel just a bit. It does have a gray hue to it, the, uh, the case, but when you see that gunmetal gray on top, uh, it really kind of lends you to think that this is stainless steel. And speaking of the bezel, the knurling on this bad boy just looks great. And the functionality is spot on. You can grab it from anywhere uh, and spin it quite easily. And the dial. This orange clockwork variant is killer. I mean, the, uh, the orange takes on different shades uh, depending on available light. Uh, you know, there's sometimes where it's just like this bright orange. Other times it's like a peach kind of color. Uh, and then, you know, there's a certain light when it hits uh, that you've got this like anodized look to it. So uh, very cool orange uh, in this regard. And the applied indices and that logo indice at the nine spot have that shimmer of light that reflect off them. Ah, just always love that look. And the loom, man, it's strong with this watch. I mean, super bright and really long lasting. Uh, I would wake up, you know, just before sunrise and uh, this thing's still a blowtorch, you know, all night long. 
nice even application across the entire watch, the handset, indices, the bezel, and the date wheel. You don't see that a lot. I love having that date wheel loom too. Now, it's not really that practical because uh, it is a little harder to read um, because, you know, the numerals are not loomed. It's just that date wheel itself. So the contrast isn't quite there, uh, you know, in the middle of the night, but it's readable. It's doable. Uh, it's just more of a novelty, I think, but a novelty that I like. And this titanium bracelet, it just feels great on your wrist. And one of the things I thought was kind of a negative at first um, was the fact that they went with a stainless steel clasp. I thought, well, that's weird. That might have just been kind of a, a cost-cutting measure, you know. But uh, it, who knows? It may have been. But if it was, they stumbled upon a excellent mistake because the bracelet itself is so light. And again, you've got a titanium watch head, but its thickness does add a little bit of weight to it. So the balance that the stainless steel clasp adds uh, is just perfect. Uh, I think without it, if this had been a titanium clasp, that that balance might have been off just a little. So um, yeah, I I'm actually in favor of this being a stainless steel clasp. I love that it has quick release spring bars on the bracelet as well. And it's fitting because remember, it also comes with this uh, Barton Elite silicone strap. Uh, and pretty cool that one, they give you an extra strap period. I mean, not a lot of manufacturers do that. Uh, and two, that it is a brand name package. Uh, I just think that uh, they could have very easily done a generic strap and called it a day, uh, but instead they partnered with Barton uh, to give you high quality uh, aftermarket strap uh, to go on your new watch. And I really like the Barton Elite silicone strap. In fact, I wore the watch on this uh, more than the bracelet. Uh, just very comfortable and a nice tie-in to the watch head as well. It made me think I need to pick up some more of these Barton straps in different colors. And speaking of the straps and bracelet, it leads me into the negatives. So this two-tone uh, titanium bracelet is nice and comfy and great, but the finishing of the two-tone section is not quite uh, detailed. Uh, so if you have a smaller wrist, you might be able to see that little spot here uh, up against the end link uh, where it meets uh, the uh, watch head. Uh, it just doesn't complete. It doesn't go all the way in. So you've got that little uh, gap there, if you will. And there's some other spots where you might see on the side of the link. Uh, but again, that's not going to come up in your, you know, daily wear of the watch. But if you are, um, you know, inspecting it, uh, you may come across some, uh, like I said, lack of detailed finishing. Now the bezel. In my unboxing video, it looked terrible. Uh, now, unfortunately, most of that was due to the fact that uh, the watch was just dirty from the previous reviewer. Uh, you know, I did a live unboxing, so it, it is what it is. But I did point out some tool marks on the bezel, and those obviously are still there. But you can see that the bezel uh, looks much cleaner. There's not any kind of blemishes other than those tool marks. But I got to tell you, this is an aluminum bezel. It's going to get some battle scars on it. And so uh, while you can't see uh, any of those markings uh, while the watch is just kind of sitting on your wrist, you know, from a distance, it's only when we're zoomed in looking real close here where you can see that kind of stuff. Uh, but aluminum is soft. This is going to happen to you as well. Uh, in fact, this mark right here above the 16, apparently that's for me. I didn't realize that I did that uh, you know, so it's going to happen from time to time. Uh, the tool markings from the machining, you know, are uh, unfortunate, but it's just going to blend in with all the other nicks and scratches that you're going to get on this thing uh, from wearing it. Uh, but if any watch is going to look good with <laughs> those battle scars, it's going to be this one. It's going to kind of match the theme, right? What's cool about the core timepiece is Fury GMT is that it uh, adds the functionality of titanium. So, uh, you know, not only are you getting a nice budget uh, Office GMT, they've kicked it up a notch uh, by giving you a grade five titanium case as well. So perfect combination. These come in at 599 US dollars directly from the core website. Uh, and there's free shipping in the US as well. Uh, you get the, uh, the watch, the display box, the extra Barton silicone strap as well. So if you like the bold tool watch look of this nice cushion case and the uh, thickness, but you don't want the weight, you're going to love this titanium case. The Core Fury GMT. Leave me your thoughts down below and uh, click that thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. And I'll catch you in the next one. I'm Wit with so many watches, so little time and money.